9.30, we'll call the May meeting of the Wood County Board of Supervisors to order. I would ask the clerk to please take the roll. If those supervisors who are here have not signed in yet, I would ask that they please do so. Mr. Mr. Nelson, are you here? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. Everybody Thank you. We, we, we do have everybody there. Uh, at this time, I would call on Supervisor Donna Roser uh, for the invocation. I would ask that the supervisors please rise and then remain standing for the public meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your many blessings. Help us to remember that all these blessings come from you and help us to be forever grateful. Thank you also for the opportunity to serve, provide direction, wisdom, and guidance during this meeting and every time deliberations and decisions take place. We pray for the citizens of our county, provide for every need as only you can do. For those serving in the military, we pray for their safety and protection. Remind us also that they also serve who stay at home and wait for their loved ones to return. Provide us now with the love, grace, and mercy needed to live productively as citizens of this great country. Prayers are lifted for all leaders at every level of government, and may thy will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And while we're on that note with the Pledge of Allegiance, I believe it's 11 o'clock Friday. Cindy, is that correct? We have the memorial service out in front of the courthouse. So um, for those of you who, who, the stone dedication. So for those of you who either work here or those are visiting, you're going to probably be fairly crowded in front of the courthouse at 11 o'clock this Friday. Um, first thing we'll deal with is the minutes from the previous meeting. We need approval of that, and those will need to be amended at some point. I have a motion by Nelson, a second by Fire, and then we need... Supervisor Reiner? Oh, uh, okay. We, we need to amend? Yeah, I did. We need to amend the minutes. Uh, so resolution-14-4-6 will reflect one no vote. Did yes. you motion? That's a, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes, that's my motion. All right, do I have a second to that amendment by Supervisor Wagner? All in favor of the amendment, please signify by aye. Aye. Okay, now back to the minutes. All in favor of approval of those minutes, please signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? And that carries. Thank you. Today we have Supervisor Hendler excused. We have no resignations, and we have several appointments. Uh, today's appointments include the Wood County Library Board, and that's Brad Hamilton, Gary Alwarden, Linda Schmidt, Dave Bard, and Hugh O'Donnell. I'm gonna do these all at once. And reappointments uh, to the Wood County Community Development Block Grant Housing Committee, we have Hilda Hinkle, Nathan Weidman, Donna Rasmussen, Jim Joyce, and Laura Francis. And Supervisor Clendenning moves to approve. Supervisor Alward in seconds. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by aye. Aye. Proposed same sign, and that motion carries. We also need confirmation of the county board committees, and I would need a motion to that effect. Motion by Hamilton, second by Bride. Any discussion on that? All in favor, please signify by aye. Aye. And opposed, and that motion carries. Uh, Public comment today. We have an opportunity at every county board meeting for anybody from the public to comment on any item that may come before the board today or, or maybe, be, it, maybe even in the very near future. Uh, we limit that discussion to two minutes. And is there anyone here from the public who would like to comment on anything? Doesn't look like it. Going twice? All right, that opportunity is gone this month. Acknowledgements and recognition. We have a number of those this month. And as you know, sitting out there, we in county government often get chastised for some of the things we do. So when we have the opportunity to acknowledge those people who have been exceptional, we want to make sure that we take that opportunity. Uh, so at this point in time, I would call on uh, Supervisor Roser to come forward. And she has a recognition for foster care families in the county. <laughs> I tell you, you could not um, suppress my surprise and delight when Sunday I showed up at church and saw some of our Wood County social workers um, set, sitting at a booth uh, 
asking, uh, educating and asking for foster care families. And uh, as the service progressed, um, our pastor dedicated the whole service to uh, recognizing foster care families and then making an appeal uh, in our congregation for additional foster care parents. Uh, you may have seen in the paper that May is Foster Care Month, and so thus all of the attention and recognition um, that is going forth um, regarding that subject. We have a family in Wood County that has received the Foster Parent of the Year Award for the Northern Region and will be honored on May 29th, uh, having lunch with the governor and being recognized with all the other um, regions. There are five regions in the state and there was a Foster Parent of the Year in each one of those reason, uh, regions. So I'm going to invite uh, Julia Danhauer up here, if she would join me, please. And she nominated this couple um, for this honor, and I'm going to let her read the nomination that she uh, provided um, that led to this recognition, and then I will provide uh, Indy and Rhonda with a certificate. So, Julia? Um, Rhonda and Indy Godesbar have been wonderful foster parents to work with over the past three years. Rhonda and Indy do not shy away from difficult placements and are often open to unique and creative placement ideas. They are able to provide appropriate supervision and care while allowing youth in their home to explore and develop their identity in a safe environment. They are loving and non-judgmental. They are advocates for the children in their home, ensuring the voice, voice and desires of the children are heard. What is most impressive about Rhonda and Indy is their ability and willingness to give of themselves selflessly to anyone who enters their home. In December 2011, the agency approached Rhonda and Indy with a unique placement of a newborn infant along with her mother who had significant limitations. Even with her limitations, the mother wanted to actively parent her daughter but could not do so independently. Rhonda and Indy agreed to take placement of the infant and created a space in their home for the mother to remain involved in her daughter's care. Rhonda and Indy spent hours working with birth to three providers, Head Start providers, meeting with medical professionals to ensure all the needs of the infant were met. The infant quickly began to thrive in their home. They moreover spent countless hours working closely with the mother, teaching and mentoring her on how to care for the infant. Rhonda and Indy went above and beyond what was asked of them and provided a loving home for the mother as well as the child. For the first time in her life, the mother received love and attention from a parent-like figure. Rhonda would take the mother shopping, helping her find clothing, getting her hair done, doing her makeup, and etc. She made the mom feel loved and special in a way that she had never had before. Long-term permanency planning was being considered for the infant and the mother, and various family members verbalized a desire to provide support. Throughout the process, the mother indicated her desire to remain in the area. As there was no family support in the area to assist long-term, it appeared that the mother and the child would move out of the county. Rhonda and Indy verbalized their desire to help the mother and child in any way possible. They were open to pursuing a guardianship of the infant while committing to the mother residing in their home as long as she desires. In December 2012, a guardianship was granted to Rhonda and Indy of the, of the infant. They continue to provide care for the now toddler and the mother to this day and are committed to providing care for both as long as needed. As they have committed to this family, they have no longer felt that they have the space to continue as foster parents and will not renew their license in 2014. Although they cherish being foster parents, they feel now they need to commit fully to this child and her mother. If not for the openness and willingness of these foster parents to try a unique placement, it is likely that ultimately this child and mother would have ended up separated from one another. It is also likely that without their assistance, the parental rights would have been terminated in this case and the child would have no relationship with either biological parent. Foster care is about supporting children and families when they are in distress. And Rhonda and, and Indy Goshwar demonstrate this value for all of their placements, particularly in this situation. Thank you very much. So Rhonda and Indy, would you come up here and join us at the podium, please? One thing that I did learn, and I, I think I knew this, but we used to be a county with se about around 75 foster homes, and now we're down to 55. And so um, if you out there um, feel that you could open your home, come on up here. 
and you are, tell me again. My name is Bryce. Bryce, and you are the, the granddaughter. So Bryce, who is Indian Rhonda's granddaughter, has joined them today. So join me in congratulating uh, Indy and Rhonda for this recognition and show our appreciation for all they've done for this family. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Your, your commitment and dedication is, you know, is deeply appreciated, uh, as is that of all the foster care families in Wood County and around the state. Uh, we have another recognition today uh, is for our Wood County Child Support Agency, and I'm going to call on Supervisor Bill Clendenning to please come forward. Uh, they are being awarded for their exemplary performance. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on behalf of Gary Allwarden, who basically is the liaison supervisor from the Judicial and Legislative Committee, he has asked me to present this award to the Child Support Agency on behalf of the Legislative Committee and Judicial, along with the County Board. I want to congratulate the Wood County Child Support Agency for receiving the 2013 Certificate of Outstanding Achievements. Wood County was one of only eight counties in the state to receive this distinction. The fact that the Wood County Child Support Agency won this award in a time when the unemployment rate in Wood County was above the national average, and above the <coughs> state average also. The agency has 11 full-time employees, and I would like them to come forward after the, I get done reading this. The agency has 11 full-time employees and collected over $16 million in child support in 2013. The agency's court orders established a rate of 98.08% was the best ever. On behalf of the Wood County Judicial and Legislative Committee and the Wood County Board, I am honored to present a certificate to the Child Support Agency with the 2013 Certificate Outstanding Achievement. If you could come forward, please. All of you. Can I have Brett read the certificate to his group also? I do want to clarify one thing before we uh, get too far here. Uh, a court order establishment rate of 98 point whatever percent Bill said would be extraordinary and be the best of the state. Uh, it was 94.08%. Uh, still very good. And, uh, the, the best that we've ever had. Uh, I don't know if that's Bill trying to push us to get the 98 or what. But, uh, I tried. <laughs> And so the certificate of outstanding achievement is for improving in current support collections, arrears collections, and improving by 1.5% or more in court order establishment. Uh, we improved by 1.7% in court order establishment, uh, the best mark of any of the eight counties that received this award. And so uh, I do want to thank a number of people, uh, including the Judicial Legislative Committee. Uh, they've been very good at working with our office in respect to allowing us to go to trainings, uh, being involved with WCA, allowing me to sit on the WCSEA board, and working with us to help restore funding to child support on the state level. Uh, it's all been very helpful, and for the members of that committee, I, I truly thank you. I also would like to thank uh, Peter Kastenholz. Uh, he is the court counsel that does the work of basically three court counsels, if you look at any other county. Uh, some agencies that are smaller than Wood County actually have a full-time attorney in their office. Uh, we don't. Peter manages it. He does a nice job for us, and I think uh, he's underappreciated for the work he does for every agency in the county. Finally, I want to thank the staff uh, for everything they've done. Truly, this is their work, not mine. Uh, they work the cases. They enter the orders. They initiate the cases, establish paternities, and get the court orders established. Uh, it's truly remarkable to work with a team uh, like this because their work that led to this award and for that uh, I truly thank them and uh, they truly come together and work as a team not just a collection of individuals and so for that I'm truly thankful and uh, honored to receive this award. Thank you.
again for the outstanding work that you do in that department. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, we have a couple of guests here today too. We have uh, Gene from the IT department in Maritime County as well as Nan Patkey, their county clerk, who is Cindy's <laughs> counterpart up there. Uh, yeah, buddy too, yeah, they hang out together. Uh, but they are going to go to the voting pro system up there starting today, I understand. And they are also going to iPads starting today. So they wanted to come here and see how bad we messed it up uh, before they go back and report to their own county. So uh, they're both out there and, and kind of trying to see what we do. So when we do go to a vote, let's try to get it right. <laughs> All right. Um, we do have a special order of business today, and that's uh, in regard to uh, bonding, basically, and highway construction funding presentation. It says immediately following the highway minutes, but that's so close to the end of the pack, I think I might run through the pack real quickly and then just back up to that. So with nothing further ado, we'll get into the packet. Referrals, and we have paper out there, and some of you are following along on the iPads. I'm gonna try to go at a pace so we get a feel for what will work for you next month as we go to the totally electronic version. So if I'm going too fast at some point, you know, hold your shadows up, <laughs> wave your arm, do something, yell at me. But anyway, the first uh, page three in the packet referrals for me, and those went to the appropriate people. Uh, we did have the minutes in the packet, which we have already approved, and that takes us to page 13 in the packet, and that's the executive committee meeting minutes of Tuesday, May 6th. Those are pages 13, 14, 15. Any questions there? The wellness board meeting of Tuesday, April 8th on page 16 and 17. We have the human resources monthly letter of comments on page 18. And by the way, as long as you're going through that, we are in the process of recruiting for that position right now, the vacant HR director's position. Uh, we have some final candidates that we're in the process of interviewing right now. That process continues, but it's been going along very smoothly to this point. Um, page 19, maintenance, monthly letter of comments. Pages 20 and 21, the finance department, Mike Martin's comments. The important one and the ones you've all been working with here on a daily basis, uh, the monthly summary by Amy Kaup and Systems. That's page 22, continues on to 23. Page 24, safety and risk management, the update. Comments from the county clerk and the executive, that was in the executive committee packet on page 25. Page 26 is a blank page uh, in the packet. And that brings us to page 27, which is the first resolution in the packet. I would ask the clerk to please read the resolution. This will be resolution 14-5-1 to amend the 2014 Edgewater Haven Nursing Home Capital Projects Fund Budget to appropriate additional unexpended borrowed funds of $186,255 for the building renovation project of Edgewater Haven. Fiscal note, no additional cost to Wood County. The unexpended funds were borrowed for the Edgewater Haven building renovation project and are available <coughs> in the Capital Projects Fund balance. Okay, you've heard the reading of the resolution. I have a motion to approve by Minor and a second by Holcamp. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Any discussion on the resolution? <coughs> if not, please vote. Supervisor. There we go. See, I didn't call you. That up. resolution passed 18 to zero unanimously. And that's how easy it works, Nan. Now, hopefully you won't have a glitch the second time. <laughs> but, but pretty simple. Um, Health and Human Services Committee meeting minutes on 29th from April 28th, as well as page 30. We have page 31 with the Board of Directors of the North Central Community Action Program. That's 31 and 32. We have Health Department reports and I will go through those slowly, but 33 through 37, pages 33 through 37, I'll give you a minute to go through those. Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Rosen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before, before we leave the uh, Wood County Health Department uh, comments, I just have another plaque that we uh, need to just recognize. 
Several years ago, um, a couple years ago, the Wood County Health Department became uh, accredited, and so they have been helping other health departments across the state move through the process. So the Institute of Wisconsin's Health gave them a plaque uh, in recognition of the extraordinary efforts of the Wood County Health Department. Uh, thank you for generously assisting other departments in their efforts to improve quality, performance, and the health of the people of Wisconsin. So not only have they achieved accreditation, but they've worked very hard to help other people achieve that accreditation, which will all, like the plaque says, benefit the health of the county. And, and we need to recognize that our health department takes leadership roles in that, and we're... <coughs> Are you going to present that just so comfortably? Well, actually, take it home? she presented it to me, but I'll give it back to her. Okay. okay. Congratulations. Uh, the accreditation in itself was a mighty medal, and obviously being recognized again. So thank you very much, Sue. Okay, am I going at an appropriate speed? Pretty easy. So far? Okay. That brings us to page 38 in the packet, which is the Wood County Human Services Department report from Kathy Bretter, and that's 38. 39, 40, the Norwood update on 41, 42, continuing on, page 43, and 44. Any questions on any of those? We have another update uh, from April from Edgewater Haven from Amy Slattery on page 45. And I see construction moving along fairly well down there on schedule. Page 46 in your packet is the Veteran Service Officer's Report, as well as 47. Page 48 is a blank page. Page 49, the April 14th minutes of the Public Safety Committee. That's 49, 50, 51, 2, and 3. We have the Central Records Committee meeting of April 29th on page 54 and 55. Any questions or concerns there? As well as 56. The Humane Officers Report uh, from March 3rd to March 30th on page 57. Our Coroner's Report on page 58. And then you have various Wood County Jail population uh, figures, some other information on pages 59 through 64, 59 through 64. I'll give you a moment to see if anybody has any questions on those. In fact, as we get out of public safety, I don't know if you saw the paper today, but uh, Sheriff Riker and his department are instituting some other what we appear to be cost-saving measures down there. Uh, and again, they're to be uh, applauded for those continued efforts. Thank you, Sheriff Riker. Um, Page 65 of the packet, Conservation, Education, Economic Development Committee of Wednesday, April 2nd. Well, 66, 67, 68. Same committee, their minutes from Wednesday, May 7th, on 69, 70, 71, 2, and 3. It's page 74 through 80. 74 through 80 are all the Golden Sands Resources, their Conservation Development Council minutes starting at 74, and they go through page 80, their various committees. I'll give you a chance to browse through those, see if there's any questions. Still appropriate speed? Okay, all right. Um, Monthly report from the various offices at the Land Conservation Office starting on page 81 with uh, Jerry Stork's report, page 82, uh, Tracy Arnold's report, some others. And then we go to page 83, and these reports come from uh, Planning and Zoning. They're pages 83 through 93. Supervisor Hankel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to point out that on page, whatever this is here, numbers are 83. There's a um, item about Wood County promotional video. We also had a meeting about that this morning. And while we think the <coughs> idea is really good, we are postponing any action on that until we get some 
feedback from the rest of the county and the issue is that um, the video would feature little logos along the side and we want to make sure that we don't appear to be endorsing or starting some kind of commercial linkage and advertising on the county site. So uh, we're going to be looking at that more more thoroughly and if any of you have comments on that, please contact one of us from the scene. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so pages can those run for the rest of the Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if we go back to just uh, page 82, just have a question here on uh, this non-metallic uh, mining. Uh, <coughs> on the very first item there, uh, there was no payment made in approximately a year. Can anybody give us any update on that, or is that kind of confidential? Um, I don't. So, President, do you have that? Well, we generally don't don't discuss this. Um, until something has been resolved. So I, I think we'll be discussing this at the next meeting though. Okay, so in June. It's gonna continue on the agenda for the next meeting, okay, Dennis? Okay, for the thank you. All right, we're back to page, again, 83 through 93, and those are the various reports from the Planning and Zoning Office. Any questions on any of those? Page 94 in the packet. Uh, in fact, 94 through 105, 94 through 105 are various reports from UW Extension, starting with Peter Manley's report on 94, and they run through 105. Did anybody make any notes there or have any questions? Anything through University Extension? Oh. 106, again, is a blank page. Page 107 is the second resolution that comes before the board today. It's introduced by the Conservation, Education, and Economic Development Committee. And I'd ask the clerk to please read the resolution. This will be resolution 14-5-2 to authorize the submittal of a state grant application and the subsequent appropriation of county funds and outside donations for a household hazardous waste clean sweep program for Wood County. Fiscal note, county funds of $20,000 Anticipated state grants, $9,000. Anticipated donated funds, $5,000. You've heard the reading of the resolution. I would assume Mr. Clendenning would want to make this motion. Motion by Clendenning, second by Hamilton. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Any discussion on the resolution? Okay, seeing none, please vote. still voting. Thank you very much. Again, that resolution passed unanimously 18 to 0. Page 109 in your packet, the Minister of the Judicial and Legislative Committee of April 22nd. That's 109. 110. Corp Council's monthly letter to that committee and 111. Supervisor Clendenin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to let you know that uh, we are also with the county board rules and in June, uh, our June meeting, we're going to be looking at having another committee meeting after the county board meeting and it's time. So anybody has any input on that, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. <coughs> See, there is uh, 111 and 112. We have the reports committee from the Child Support Agency on 113. And then we have pages 114 through 118 are updates on various notice of injury and claims and cases that the county is dealing with right now, 114 through 118. 119 in your packet, the start of the Highway Infrastructure Integration Committee of May 1st, that's 119, 20, 21, and 22. We have current project updates from the Highway Commissioner on 123. Parks Construction Supervisor Report on 124. There are Office Supervisors on 125. The Administrator's Report on 126. And then the Forest Administrator's Report on page 127. I'm gonna hold out the next bunch of pages, 129 through 146, is information that you're going to get uh, with this presentation. So pages 129, through 146, we're just going to set aside. We're going to run through this packet because we're almost done before we bring up the highway commissioner uh, 
uh, in their presentation. So page 147 in your packet, this is a test on how to jump ahead 20 pages real quick. I want a tutorial. How do you do that? That's Move your hand. Move your hand. Move your hand. Hold your stylus up now. I'm cheating. You take the pages and you turn them. <laughs> Yeah, everything's bookmarked, so you can use the slider or you can use the bookmarks. There's basically three ways. You can use your slider bar at the bottom. You can go to your outline because I bookmarked all, all of the main parts of the packet. Um, and you can go to your menu and choose go to page and then your keyboard will come up and you can choose your page number. So there's various ways to get to the page you want to be on. Okay. That's my Okay, we'll start there. Page 147, Marshfield Fairgrounds Commission, minutes from Wednesday, April 16th. Supervisor Quandetti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have a question. I don't know, maybe it was, maybe I missed it. But I thought they had election of officers. No? Yeah. no? Hmm. Forgot to put it in the, in the last minute. <laughs> What's not the agenda? Oh, I know about that. So we'll be on tomorrow. Yeah. It's not on tomorrow's agenda. Oh, here. Okay. So what I do. Just one more. What I'm getting is, is you're going to have it, and then end up on the agenda. It's now supposed it's to be on tomorrow. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. 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 We're, we're checking right now. Look at my iPad. No, it's not. No, it's not. So I guess we delay that for another month. Is that the process? Yeah, 24 hours. You're going to be on that? Okay. They'll adjust, adapt, make it work. All right, page 147 was the Marshfield Fairgrounds Commission minutes of the 16th. Page 149, the Central Wisconsin State Fair Board minutes of March 17, as well as 150. Uh, the Board of Directors special meeting from Monday, March 31st on 151 and 152. Uh, and we are looking at uh, some of the operations up there and trying to make that as, as good and financially uh, sound operation as we can going forward. So that is in the process. Um, minutes of the McMillan Memorial Library Board of Trustees on 153. The South Central Library System minutes on 154 and 155. The Wood County Library Board minutes of January 30th on 156. And then the Space Needs Implementation Committee minutes of April 14th on 157. That brings me to page 159 in the packet and um, you know I think I'm gonna hold this to the very end I'm gonna hold this to the very end so right now we're gonna go back to the uh, the highway committee and the special order of business they have and it's it's to talk a little bit about what the future of highway funding in Wood County might be so Doug I don't know if you're gonna take the lead on this or at least introduce it and then Roland's gonna follow up or who you're using say you got the whole crew I, I made the comment earlier, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't kid him because we're, we're on TV, but I said, these guys had to dust off the coats and ties to come up for the presentation because highway committee is usually out in the field, not up in front of the board. And I do feel overdressed. I bet you. <laughs> but you always look sharp. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do today is a debt service presentation. Uh, there's, there's five items on the agenda. The first being me, I'm going to go through the PACER rating. That's the system, that's the system that we use to rate our roads. Second will be a, a uh, historical per perspective from Roland, and then uh, he also has some PACER graphs that are generated through our PACER program. Uh, and then John will go through our GTA and our, our finance, and then we'll follow up with Mike Martin with the and Mike and Jerry with the end here. So I'm going to take that into the. Uh, you're going to see a lot of slides and on Roland's presentations, and a lot of that stuff is generated off our PACER rating system. Uh, our goal is to provide a comfortable, safe, and economical surface. Uh, that's not a simple task uh, in, through the highway department. Goal requires balancing priorities uh, and making diffi difficult decisions. Uh, 
it is, PACER is one of our management tools. It's rated on one to 10, 10 being the best, one obviously being the lowest. Uh, we do rate our roads every year. Uh, we're required to do it every other year, but at the highway department, we do it every year. Uh, PACER has the support of Federal Highway Administration, Wisconsin Department of uh, Transportation, also the University of Wisconsin. So it's not something we dreamed up. It is a, affiliated with a lot of folks out there on how to rate our roads, so, and we, we are all trained on that. Uh, PACER uses a visual inspection of the surface. Obviously, we have Roland as an engineer. He's able to go a little deeper in that on that. So with that being said, I'm going to leave it to Roland to get started here on this uh, presentation. We'll have questions at the end here, too. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, I don't have a lot of slides. I'm, I'll try to keep it brief. But uh, as the county highway engineer, I work with commissioner every year to develop a five-year plan and we revise the years that have been developed ahead of time because other issues come up and what we're recognizing is that there's a serious problem developing and that's why we're here to talk to you about it and uh, maybe capture some things ahead of time and, and head this off before it gets too bad um, I'm, a fir I'm a firm believer in redundancy and I have a, some slides and I also put them in here just in case things didn't work so you can follow along um, with the, the handouts where you can watch the slides ahead. But uh, I'm going to start first of all with a couple of um, basics that the engineering industry uh, recommends as, as good, good basics for building highways. And we like to keep the water away from the roadway. Um, we like to build on a firm foundation. We use the best available materials, proper compaction for obvious reasons. And then we design for our current traffic loads and volumes. And then we design for maintenance in the future. We try to make sure that we're not building something that we can't maintain uh, at an economical uh, you know, practice in the future. And then we build from the bottom up, and I'll talk about that in, the, in a few seconds. And then the last thing we like to do is like to protect our investment. Probably one of the largest investments in Wood County is our highway system. And it's something that we need to take a, fair, a very serious look at right now. Uh, before I step into some some other uh, graphs here for you, uh, good. Um, a little history on a roadway. Wood County has 325 miles of, of county highways. Most of that was built prior to 1980, and a lot of it was built prior to 1970. And we built that right on native soils, and there's a little bit of gravel, gravel underneath the pavements. And um, most of the pavements are only 22 feet wide, generally three to five inches thick and we have some narrow shoulders. That was a very common practice uh, prior to 1970. We just went along, we cleared the vegetation, we scooped out the material to create some ditches, we threw it up in a mound, we threw some gravel on it and we paved it, if we paved it at the time, and we started driving on it. Most of our roads would, would withstand the traffic that we had at that time. It wasn't 98,000 pound pulp trucks. It wasn't 18 foot to 24 foot uh, agricultural equipment. A lot of the, the traffic we had at that point um, was small trucks, maybe a tandem, maybe a triaxle at the most. Some of the vehicles we had you know, were, uh, were large tired, so the, the pressure and the, and the volumes that we had weren't using the roads. And uh, frost and, and other issues were, were easily resolved. You know, you go and you, you dig out a spot that was bad and you, and you patch it up, and people were, were accepting to that. And, now what we have is we have large trucks, large large loads, and we have um, design standards that we, we follow. The state of Wisconsin follows Federal Highway, and we follow them. And, and so when we design roads today, we you know we have to design uh, accepting slopes. So if a vehicle leaves the roadway, we want to be able to maintain that vehicle upright. And curves has to be have to be designed so that you can take those curves at a, a you know recommended speed so you don't leave the roadway. Um, a lot of the things that we've done in the past were, were built because the highway didn't have to follow those standards. We, we built things that, you know, got you from point A to point B. And uh, now that we have a lot of the, the changes in federal regulations and we're trying to maintain these roads, we have to deal with marsh, wetlands, uh, <coughs> endangered species, all kinds of things that kind of keep us uh, hemmed into places where typically you wouldn't build a road today. But because they're there, we're there, we have to maintain them where they're at. 
And so what I've done is I've kind of give you a, a little snapshot here of what, uh, what kind of soils are and what we're dealing with. And this, this spring was a good example of what we had to deal with. Um, if you took a snapshot of the pavement, uh, or I'm sorry, the soils underneath most of our roads, that top six inches would have been topsoil, six to 12 inches would have been topsoil, some silty loam, uh, and below that would have been another foot of sandy loam, and then below that would have been another foot to 30 inches of sandy loam and clay, and then finally you get down to about three to six feet, and you're finally into some sand or rock. Great for farming, but not great for building roads on. Unfortunately, that's what we're dealing with. Uh, a lot of the roads, like I said, when, when they were constructed originally, we just cleared the vegetation. We didn't care, we didn't care about those subsoils. As long as it could carry the traffic we, we had at the time, we are okay with it. Um, but as you can see, this spring, we had a lot of roads that didn't stay in shape. They got, frost got into them, they lifted them, they broke them up, pavements are coming apart. And as uh, Mr. Pazanov mentioned, we, we have a rating system where we look at the surface. And the surface is an indicator of what's happening below the surface. And so what we're finding is that the subsoils are giving us issues, the pavements are coming apart. And with the money that we've been spending in our program lately, we're, we're rebuilding a lot less than what we should be to maintain a, a good transportation system in, Wisconsin, or in Wood County. And so I've got some charts that kind of fill you in on this and, and how it's looking for us. Um, this first chart, if you look at the blue line, that is a, that's a recommended or acceptable life cycle of a pavement. You start out, when you build it new, it's, it's a 10. That's the highest rating it can be. And in a few years, it starts to degrade. In a few more years, it degrades a little bit more. And anything above a five, a six, um, you know, that, that's an acceptable pavement ride. And, and it's okay for us to do a little maintenance on it, and people will they'll, they'll accept that kind of a ride. But when you get below that, then it's becoming hazardous, it's becoming something that people start to avoid and complain about and becomes very costly to fix. So if you follow that blue line, the one that steps down, it shows you when we get to a six, we have typically a pavement type of improvement. And that's usually a chip seal or something like a, a thin overlay and, and that builds some structure or maintains a, a proper ride and uh, it makes people happy again so they're not you know, dealing with potholes and issues. And that's only gonna get us to a, maybe a seven or eight for a short period. And then usually about you know, four or five years later, or I'm sorry, 20 years later, we're down to uh, year 40 of that pavement. And now we're at the point where it looks it needs to be rebuilt. And we do a structural improvement. And that gets us back to a 10. That's the proper fix for making roads last. Well, unfortunately, what I'm noticing and what we've been seeing here, and we're not the only county in this, in this condition, is we're following the red line. And that red line is what's happening because the funding that we have available to improve the, the lane miles that, that Wood County has isn't going as far and we aren't reconstructing as much as we can. And unfortunately, that, degra that, that degradation happens quicker and quicker once you get below that, that six. So the next slide is a... Uh, a summary of what we've we've got on data, and it's only going back to year 2005. And and what I say earlier is that anything that's above a six, uh, rating wise, we we really don't hear a lot of complaints. People are okay with that; they're happy with it. They like to see a little higher, but that's okay. Um, on average, in 2005, our our pavements rated a 7.38, which is really good, and in retro to all the other counties around us, that's a really good rating. And as, it, as you can see, it starts to degrade. In 2007, 2008, you see it starts to really dip. Um, and I'll show you in a future slide here why some of that's happening. But then you see a little climb there from 2009 up to 2012. And that was a period where Wood County went and leveraged as much money as they could against the stimulus funding, our programming, and we recaptured a lot of roadway at that point that made it really, um, beneficial for us to go out and spend the money we had and, and it, it stretched our money further than what we could have ever imagined. But now after 2012, you can start to see the little dip in 2013 and the money that we, we were finding in that 2008, 2009 period is no longer available and we're back to our normal program and a normal budget. And the next slide is gonna really help you uh, see where, where we're heading. If you look at the red line on top, that is the roads 
the, the percentage of rows that are rated as an, as an eight. And the blue line on the bottom is you know, on the left hand side of the chart is the rows that are rated a four. And you can see in 2005, that was, that was acceptable because those roads that were forced, we were going to rebuild in the near future, and, and we have probably since then. But those eights are starting to decline. The number of ro road miles that we have that are in that acceptable range have really declined. So in 2008, we hit, we hit a pretty low point where eights were starting to disappear. And then again, we had the stimulus money in 2008, 2009. We rebuilt some of those lower roads, and we start to increase the number of eights that we have in the county. The next slide helps you see why, and this is where it becomes pretty alarming to me. And if you look at, on the right-hand side of that chart, I don't know if that works or not, but on the right-hand side, it talks about the, uh, which of these, what these bars mean. And the gold bar, that's, it's uh, 2,000 uh, numbers as far as what costs were to maintain a two-lane rural highway. And if we just look at, at the resurfacing costs, that's the, the group of bars on the far left-hand side. And in 2000, it was roughly 100, and this is statewide averages, by the way. This aren't Wood County's averages. It was around $180,000 to maintain a mile of, of rural pavement. And you skip ahead on the far right, the blue line, the blue bar, that is 2012 uh, data. And now you're well over, it's, you're pushing $300,000 per mile. And what's causing this? Um, a number of factors. Cost of materials, labor, uh, design standards. Going back to what I said earlier, design standards are changing. We, we have to uh, follow certain guidelines as far as designing curves and, and slopes and ditches and drainage and things have become a little more stringent for us to follow. Uh, but in addition to that, we're building and designing for today's traffic the 98,000 pound trucks, the agricultural equipment, things that, are, that we're facing in today's terms. So not all of this is, is uh, you know, just because of cost of labor and materials, but you know, we have to expand our design standards to meet those. So to give you an idea of what we're looking at, and the slides here probably aren't as good or as clear as the, the handouts you have there, the next five or six sheets is a, uh, is a revised 2005, uh, I'm sorry, revised five-year uh, roadway plan. And if you look at what we're looking at budgeting in 2014, it's about $2.4 million. And we have some money in there leveraged that, you know, from uh, the whole chunk of BIA project. And otherwise, the rest of that's coming out of our program, out of our budget. And uh, just to fill you in a little bit more, it, 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 where our funding comes from, the, the DOT has what's called the, the Surface Transportation Program for Local Roads. And we're eligible, we apply every year, we, we submit as many applications as we see we can, we can submit. And uh, in the past, rural Wisconsin was awarded uh, quite a bit of money. They, you know, we, there was a split in the program, there's urban, there's rural, and there's bridge. And uh, it's becoming very competitive. And in 2012, there was a census taken and it changed the, the way they, they distribute this, this, uh, the funding. And because more people are moving to rural areas, they've distributed more, of, I'm sorry, moving from rural to urban. They've taken a lot of the money out of the rural program and they put it into the urban. And Wood County itself does not uh, qualify for any of the urban funding from that, from that program. And our, our funding in that program has dropped significantly and Wood County was not awarded a single ur uh, rural program project this year. We had five bridges that we, we submitted for Wood County that uh, were deficient and, and were at the point where they qualify for replacement, and out of those five, we were awarded one. So the money that comes back from the DOT is very competitive, and uh, we're, we're doing everything we can to get that in Wood County. And uh, this 2014 program shows where we're using our money and, and how we're applying it. And if you'll notice, there's a bar in there, uh, the sand color bar. That is uh, signifying projects that we are putting on a chip seal. And to give you an idea of what that does, it, it basically just covers the surface. It protects the cracks from, from water getting through and, and infiltrating the roadbed. Um, it really isn't adding any structural integrity to the road at all. It's, a, it's in essence, um, 
camouflaging some of the some of the problems we're having with them roads. But it's it's going to prolong us from having to rebuild them immediately because we don't have the funding to do that. And if you look in the middle there, I've, I've indicated with what they call a hashtag or pound sign, uh, the projects that are actually doing an, a structural improvement. And in our program, in an accepted roadway uh, management plan, is you should be applying some type of structural improvement within every 20 years. And that gets your, that, that allows you to maintain a system that over time will degrade at a much slower rate. If you remember the blue bar uh, I showed you in an earlier graph, if you, if you can apply a structural improvement within that first 20 years, you're gonna prolong that pavement's life a lot longer. And with 325 miles, it's, we're, we're stretching it out to now, we're at 40 years plus before we can touch every mile of Wood County and make it a structural improvement. And with this plan that we're looking at right now, is if you jump into 2015's program, we're showing a, a much higher uh, program there, and that and that's adding a lot more miles of structural improvement. And what we're proposing here is a plan that's going to add um, funding into our program and allow us to do a catch up, and then taper off after a few years. And the financial part of that, I'm going to leave it to John and and to Mike. But the questions that we've gotten from our committee and from other folks are. You know this plan we have. You know, is it something that we can apply and we do as a, as a as a highway department? And the reason I've got it at four million roughly dollars here is because yes, I feel very confident that our staff and our crew can do this. And if there's something in there that we can't do or we can't uh, perform out of our shop, we'll contract it. And uh, we'll, we we do that regularly with with uh, things that we don't do internally. But anyway. I stepped through year two, uh, 2015, 2016, all the way to 2019, and then when you get to 2019, you see there's a little, a little decrease. And the reason I'm trying to just put that in perspective for everybody is that I can realistically look out three to five years and say, yep, those are the roads that absolutely need to be improved. Without any doubt, we can do that. Once you start getting beyond that into year five, year six, things can pop up that we, you know, we don't know. And I'm, I'm not guessing at this point, I'm gonna be as realistic as possible. So in year 2019, um, we're not showing as much and we're trying to look at hopefully things get balanced out and get back into a realistic program and not have to spend that amount every year. Um, but that doesn't mean that needs and inflation and things will happen and creep into us as it's continuing to do at this point. Um, but I'm gonna leave you with this, this next slide here. I'm gonna hop through these real quick. Um, the future of Wood County Highways, it's, it's uh, the basic issue here is that the cost to maintain and build have, have, have gone up. Um, the program has been pretty stagnant for a while and uh, we're looking at hoping to, uh, to catch up. And with the plan that's coming up next in, in the next discussion, you'll see why. Um, our ratings and our operations on our highways have, have degraded, they've been slowly declining and uh, we're not able to maintain it at this point with the amount of money that we're budgeted. And the last thing I'd like to, to point out is that we do have this plan. We have a plan to protect our system. It is a very expensive uh, investment that we have in Wood County. And uh, we're, we're coming up with innovative ways to do everything we can as economically as we can. And we apply that every time we can. So in order for us to make sure that we don't lose this investment, um, I've shown you a five-year plan that's, that does a catch-up and ultimately will balance itself out after that. So I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna let John or Mike take the next step. Uh, we're, we're gonna have John, uh, uh, one other opportunity that we have to generate revenue is through our GTA, general transportation aids. And they're not by the miles you have, they're, they're how much money you spend. So there's an opportunity to generate some, some revenues with that and I'm gonna leave that, that up to John and he's gonna talk about that. John is our uh, uh, highway accountant. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Roland. Yeah, as uh, Doug mentioned, I'm John Peckham. For those of you who don't know, I'm the accounting supervisor at the highway department. And I just want to talk to you for a couple of minutes uh, regarding this slide that you see before you. It's a highly summarized snapshot of where we are right now, uh, at least within the last year anyway, and where we'd like to go. I can give you a couple of ideas of how we can get to the position that Roland was just outlining. 
Um, so I draw your attention, first of all, to the column that's uh, under current. And these are figures that uh, I took right from the 2013 uh, statements of account. You can see these are revenues and expenses, no balance sheet accounts here. Uh, I draw your attention, first of all, to the role of state aids transportation. Now this is a separate uh, funding mechanism uh, from what Roland was talking about. He was talking about STP, rural and urban funding. Those are, those are uh, funding sources where you have to apply. You have a project in mind, uh, you put together a plan and apply for those. These, general, these state aids transportation, otherwise known as general transportation aids, we get those uh, automatically, uh, annual payments, uh, and three annual payments from the state. And they are based on a six year average of our construction costs. And that's an interesting thing uh, because it's one of those deals where the more you spend, the more you get. So we'll revisit that uh, a little bit later again. Uh, then if you just skip down a couple of rows, I'd just like to point out quickly the county levy amount, uh, 2.8 million. I uh, point that out because uh, in one of our options, that changes a little bit. Uh, going down a couple more rows, uh, highway construction under expenses. About $2 million we spend annually right now in construction costs. This is aside from maintenance, okay? And that's specifically what we're talking about now. As Roland pointed out, uh, at least in the catch-up phase, we would prefer to be spending about $4.7 million. Okay, so now I'd just like to talk to you about a couple of ideas um, that we would like to present to, to you uh, that, would, that would get us kind of where we, we want to go. Uh, and I've done that through two options that I present here, option A and option B. Under option A, there would be no change in our levy, but we would get additional funding that would get us up to that 4.7 million figure that uh, Roland was talking about as a catch-up figure annually. Option B, we would reduce our levy by 1.8 million and make that up through additional funding. Mike's gonna talk in detail about that. But now I'd just like to go back through and uh, under each of these options, look at those figures again. If you'd like to look at the state aid transportation, the general transportation aids rule, you can see that it went up about $82,000. Well, that's because like I said, the more you spend, the more you get. Unless the state changes the formula, we've calculated that we get about a 3% increase for every dollar that we spend. And every year that you spend more, it increases your six year average, which incrementally increases the funding. Okay. Under option A, the county levy stays the same. Our debt service that we're asking for under that option would be 2.7 million. And then you can see under highway construction that the uh, highway construction figure goes up by that 2.7 million. Now if you go over to option B, you can see the state aid transportation goes up by the same amount of money, $82,000 from what it is currently. The county levy, however, <coughs> drops by $1.8 million. I said, Mike will talk to you about the hole that's in the levy right now that uh, could perhaps be filled by, by us giving that money back to the county, basically. But then we would make that up, as you can see, the debt service figure of $4.5 million. Right. Before we get uh, before we get Mike up here, I'd like to just take a moment. That if does anybody have any questions on what, what we've talked about so far? Okay, uh, Mike is yours. Morning, everyone. Um, John covered a lot of uh, what I would have to say about this, but on page 146 is the, the problem that we have in our current budget. Uh, on page 146, I've, I've laid out um, the sources and uses that we have in our budget. And the key figure that's going to be up for discussion as an option B on what John presented is the structural hole in our budget. Uh, we have a balanced budget, but it doesn't cover, the, the current year revenues don't cover the current year 
expenditures. What we do to balance our budget each year is use our cash reserves to provide the final source of money to balance our budget. And out in year 2014, um, that undesignated funds applied was $1.8 million. And that was a key figure in what John presented as far as uh, a solution that option B provides. Uh, we don't have uh, much outstanding debt in Wood County. Right now we only have one outstanding debt issue, and that's the debt we took out to renovate Edgewater Nursing Home and to refinance our two radio towers. Uh, we currently pay only 10 cents uh, of our tax rate to fund debt service. Uh, that puts us in the top 10 or bottom 10, however you look upon it, as far as counties across the state. There are some counties that have no debt, uh, but we are one of the very lowest as far as debt service in our budget. Uh, and so what we're proposing, and I, and I believe there's a, there's a general fairness of paying for long live assets with long revenue sources. Uh, and that's what debt does. If, if we're paying for a project that has got a life of 10 years, rather than pay, having taxpayer A pay for all of that in year one when it's purchased or constructed, we're going to spread the payment of that over 10 years of taxpayers. So as they benefit from that asset that's built, like a brand new road, uh, each year's taxpayer pays for it rather than the taxpayer that paid for it in year one. Uh, we're fortunate today to have um, Jerry Dudzik from Springstead. Uh, Springstead has been our financial advisors on, on all of our recent debt issues. They advise us on the edge of our borrowing and, and the uh, funding of our pension liability. So what uh, Springstead has done, there's a, there's a memo that starts on page uh, 129 written by Joe Murray, and he lays out as far as the, the theory of this, and then he's modeled 10 years of borrowing and, and what it would look like. And uh, Jerry Dudzik's here to, to walk you through that, what that's going to look like. Thank you, Mike. Good morning. Good morning. As Mike mentioned, my name is Jerry Dudzik. I serve as uh, Vice President of Springstead Incorporated out of our Milwaukee, Wisconsin office. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the financing um, for the uh, thoughts and, and really needs that were just articulated to you. Um, serving as the county's financial advisor, we wanted to put together um, a financing plan model that uh, looked at annual issue size for general uh, promissory notes, general obligation promissory notes for four million at 10 years. And the, I want to make a point here that the actual size of that issue um, would change dependent on uh, final needs for project final costs, so that can be adjusted. So keep that in mind, but for discussion purposes, we're gonna use four million to discuss this today. Um, and I will mention that we were um, in communication with both the County Highway Department and Finance Department uh, through this process and, and also attended a, a recent meeting. Our two key objectives for the county here are number one, provide the financing 3.9 million in project funds to address not only the um, ongoing improvements which come out to almost two million dollars per year but also to address the um, bigger uh, issue uh, the deteriorating highways that counties around the state are dealing with um, the second objective that Springstead was looking at was to resolve the, uh, the budget um, st structural uh, challenges and, and so you don't have to tap into those cash reserves as as Mike uh, just mentioned to you so under the levy limits, our approach in looking at this plan um, would free up those dollars um, through the debt issuance. The uh, rates right now are still very low. Um, the one big benefit that you have here as a county is you'd be able to exercise your AA1 credit rating, which is great. Um, I looked at your recent uh, rating two years ago from the Edgewater Nursing Home Project uh, from Moody's and um, some very uh, good notes uh, that came out of that rating from the county and it just uh, kudos to you in terms of managing your dollars um, in a very uh, good way. Um, so that would, is going to position the county um, in the future at a very good uh, issuing level. Um, you will see within the notes on page 
130 that we are seeing counties, um, other counties across county and Pierce County have also gone through this process of issuing debt um, to address their highway challenges and, and to maintain them. So you will see that in the, the memo that Mr. Joel Murray put together. The debt model itself um, is based on annual debt issuance. Again, uh, about $4 million for 10 years. So $4 million on an annual uh, basis. It could be modified to be biannually done where we would look at doing it every other year, then it would be $8 million. Um, the one challenge with that is it actually puts, would put the county in a different uh, category. Um, you would no longer be viewed as a small, you wouldn't get a small issuer exception um, and there's spend down requirements that would uh, apply in that case. Uh, from a tax rate standpoint, based on your 2013 equalized valuation of about $4.7 billion, the first year impact on that first uh, debt payment would be about uh, $9.90. We rounded in the memo to be $10. And then as we look at the financing plan for the later years, it would slowly ramp up by an increment of about $400,000 a year. So it wouldn't hit the taxpayer right away uh, to a level of $74 per year for a $100,000 home in 2022. As you'll see that first year impact in looking at the model, and what I'm referencing there is on page 136, um, you will see the uh, true interest cost. Again, I reference the good rates out there right now of 1.84%. Uh, based on the total cost for a $100,000 home, this financing plan would require, require someone that owned a home at $100,000 to pay um, $986 over 18 years total. That's total, so on average about $55 per year if you spread that out. Wanted to mention that there is an option if you wanted to reduce the tax levy and spread out the debt farther as opposed to doing 10-year promissory notes. We could do it out farther, um, then, then it would actually be identified as a bond and there are some uh, different requirements with that. You'll see in the memorandum, there's that 30-day per permissive referendum. Uh, petition period, so um, it does put you in a different category. The lower amount, the four million, doing it annually, um, you have a, a different, um, you fall in a different category. So there's more flexibility from that standpoint. But again, if you would spread it out, there are, is some reduction on the tax impact that you would see. From a timing standpoint, authorizing the resolution, we would suggest or recommend a June or July date. Typically, borrowing takes about uh, three months. Uh, typically, there's an authorizing resolution in month one, uh, sale of the bonds or notes in month two, and then closing comes in month three, uh, where we closely work with your bond council, which is Quarles and Brady. So that's uh, how that would uh, fall out. Outside of that, um, you have the, the details on the tax impact, so you can see that by calendar year, what that looks like. We included for you then really summaries, the aggregate, uh, project financing with both principal and interest on page 134. And then we also have just interest alone on the following page. And then the, the pages beyond that really break down what uh, each individual year would look like. Now the first year we have um, current rates is, is a peer now, and then we project forward. We put in about 50 basis points for the coupons, as you'll see moving forward. Um, obviously, no one has a crystal ball on that, but we did uh, increase that, so you would see uh, the potential for uh, increase um, on rates. With that, that pretty much concluded what I wanted to cover. I hopefully summarize this for you, and, and I guess I would inquire if there are any questions. I'd be happy to answer those right now. Sure, Supervisor Manor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on your estimates for the the amount of the debt service per year, um, the equalized value, did you factor in any sort of increase or an average increase per year, or did you base it just on what it is today? That is a great question, by the way. Um, we actually just based it on, on what it is today. Um, one of the reasons is several um, counties, uh, districts, villages, statewide have had uh, equalized valuations that have either gone down in the last couple of years or have gone up a little bit in, in the most recent years. Um, we do like to go on the conservative approach with our numbers initially. But that is something we could take a look at and also adjust in uh, future modeling for, that we do for you. Other questions? Supervisor Wagner. 
Uh, first of all, uh, I'm I'm happy to see a proposal like this because I, I you know, as I, I've been born with dirt fire with my normal grant that he hears from me in Board of Public Works, and that is that basically we need a separate fund and we need a separate dedicated source of funds uh, to roads to keep up with it because our in 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 Marshfield our graphs our our pacer charts look very similar to yours and we have the same situation. So I understand what you're trying to do here. I understand also that what the, the beauty of this debt schedule that you put down, even without a change in equalized values, is that in the year 2022, the increase stops and stabilizes, and then what happens is the borrowing each year just replaces what was already paid off in the in the in the past year. But that's that's the ultimate goal, and that's that's what I'd like to see happen. This thing. The only thing I'm actually concerned about, um, and and how this fits in with the other capital improvements that the county is going to need and come up with in the next couple of years. Um, oh, by the way, before I, before I forget it, I like option B better because it, it plugs that, that hole in the deficit, and that, that would be, if we were to vote on that, that that would be where my preference would be. But at the same time, um, we're facing some massive, uh, massive cost in the future. I don't think anybody denies the need for some of the costs that the Space Needs Committee has looked at. It's a question of how do we how do we get them, and if it's seventy four dollars per hundred thousand a year, are we going to add another seventy four thousand per hundred thousand somewhere else? I'd like to I'd like to see I'd like to see the executive committee address this in terms of long term capital needs for all departments as well as the highway department. But but I am generally supportive of this. Thank you. Looks like you were up here reading what I wrote down, Supervisor Wagner. That was. That's exactly what I said. You know, this is part of a larger, more comprehensive discussion you know, as it relates to prioritization and needs around the county, and then how that's going to relate to tax levy. At the same time, we want to leverage every dollar that we have the opportunity to leverage. So, I swear, as a period when I had written down some same thoughts, Supervisor Glendening. Thank you, I was just wondering if this uh, PowerPoint presentation could be put on our iPads. Yes, thank you. So it's part of part of the record that we have. Do that. I was going to raise my pen. So the purpose of today's discussion was to, to roll this out, to let you chew on, to think about it, you know, to decide how we're going to proceed in the future. Uh, you know, debt service is certainly one of the ways to finance things as we move forward, you know, to simplify that. And, and it's an option. Uh, it changes the way we've done business. It's it's a fundamental change in the way we have operated in this county, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Supervisor Yeah, one more thing, Mr. Chairman. One more thing for the Highway Committee. I think Wood County, much like other rural counties, lacks a good east-west freight route. And that's our problem. A lot of our county roads are used where it could be state and federal. And I, do you see any future other than the expansion of Highway 54 and what I call the bridge to Port Edwards? You know, I, I prob personally don't think that that's a good uh, freight route, that freight route that is needed in this area. I think a better one. So could that make a difference in what, maintenance to our roads? Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. And that 54 bypass that we've talked about, uh, that's still on our radar. We, we, we look at that as uh, we've been talking to state folks about that. Uh, there is a lot of large trucks that come through Wisconsin Rapids and, and they have a hard time getting through. So that is a vital part of what we need to do. Uh, uh, we still work on that about every week. We're, we're talking to uh, Secretary of Transportation, uh, all his folks. Uh, are they listening? In some cases, yes, but uh, they have other needs too. So, uh, Bill, you're absolutely right. They're, they're, they, we need a, a, a heavy truck, long truck, transportation system through Wisconsin Rapids or through uh, Wood County. And I guess this starts the conversation. Uh, June, first week in June, we actually have a, a meeting with towns, villages, cities, and all the municipalities in Madison uh, with the Secretary of Transportation. It's part of an LGI rollout to decide how we're going to fund transportation going forward in the state. And it encompasses a lot of different options, alternatives, and variables. But I think we'll get a better sense there, too. But this gives you something to, uh, this special art business gives you something to go home and think about, uh, talk to those people you represent, see how they think we might best move forward. 
Is there anything else in Supervisor Winch? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I may be beating a dead horse here. I, I brought this up before. Um, I think we need to consider some of our options with the state. One of those being the, the PECFA fund, which everybody pays two and a half cents a gallon into. They don't pay out. They take in about $30 million a year. And I, I would assume that the state is probably looking at that fund also. And a couple of years ago, they transferred $30 million into the transportation fund. There's another one out there for the transfer of vehicles. I think it costs an individual $75. The DNR, for some reason, gets $9 out of that, which is another $17 million. My point is, I think they've already collected the money. If they would just allocate it, I don't know what they're doing with it. It just sits in its fund. The PECFO fund doesn't pay anybody for anything. So I think there's monies there if they reallocate them and spend them for highways, whether it be Wood County or state. But maybe they could spread this out amongst the counties. I think we may need to make contact with them. Supervisor Ryan? I think that's probably one of the things that Lance is probably going to be discussing when, he, when the WCA board meets with them. But as it so often is the case, um, the state will certainly take care of their own first. I mean, they have some real critical needs on the state highway systems. I mean, we, we talk about continuing to wait for the state to come up with money, and it never quite trickles down past the state highway fund. I mean, uh, we looked at this year um, our routine maintenance agreement with the, count with the state for the state roads. Yeah, it did go up. Did our general transportation needs and the count for the county system go up? No, um, it did not. Um, those are issues. Um, I, how long do you let these roads sit before we, we finally pull the pull the trigger and say yes, we need to improve our roads regardless of what the state ever comes with because all this could be dead by the time the state ever comes up with an idea on how to fund county and town and city roads. Um, you've seen a lot of towns already do this type of spending, but it's so much easier for towns to um, increase levy. Uh, through our special meeting, our budget hearing. It's not a town board that sets the levy, it's uh, the elector. So uh, towns can, um, I think just about, every, maybe not, but just about every town in the county has gone beyond the levy limit um, through that special meeting process. Um, I, I, I just don't know how long our county system can wait um, for the state to come through with funding that may never, ever show up. I'll ask those specific questions up right Bill and I mean Supervisor Nelson. Uh, the one uh, comment I have there uh, with the freight route 54 and I think we can't forget about Highway 10 which is a direct connection to 94 and um, of course to get to 94 you got to go through two more counties but again we're we're more than halfway through uh, Wood County right now with the four lane and uh, that might be an easier uh, fix than looking at something else that has to jump here to there to whatever to get to the uh, proper uh, freeways. Yeah, you're absolutely right there. Uh, I, I know uh, they have no plans on extending that to this, this point in time, but uh, you're right that it, it makes sense to use that one also. Now, we're talking about the segregated funds. Uh, their uh, WCHA is out uh, right now they're talking that there's a I think they're generating a bill to uh, bring to the voters this fall uh, to vote on uh, to stop the segregation of the, to keep the transportation funds where they're at instead of uh, dividing them off so that that's out there Bill, you know, that's a good question too by the way timetable yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I may, what, what we had talked about in the executive committee was we wanted the special order business, um, and then the highway committee, um, we wanted the special order business to give the supervisors the information. Um, next month we would be bringing a resolution for the bonding is what the plan was. Um, that way it can be incorporated into the 2015 budget. That way the whole 2015 budget isn't. Can't, uh, we, we need some uh, guidance on where to go with the 2015 budget. That way, uh, that's why we're doing this. What we're planning on doing is having that resolution next month. Also, also with the highway department, if we're if we're going to move forward on this, uh, we need time to change, get our plans up to speed. Where, what direction we're going to go? So, if we're going to do this, we talked about bringing it forth next month. Any other questions, Supervisor Rosa? You know, I've been looking, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, I've been looking at a lot of the documents that have been coming out about our population in Wood County and the aging demographics and all the things, and 
you know, I just see such a need for economic development here. You know, we have friends whose kids graduate from school. They don't stick around in our county. You know, there aren't jobs here for, you know, some of these people to take it. I see this transportation infrastructure such a critical part for, of our economic development that I, I just feel that 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 infrastructure has got to be laid if we're going to build a culture of economic development in our county. And if we ignore the needs that we have now, I think that we're laying a bleak future for people that are coming after us. And we have to think about how we're going to pull people into our county to provide what we need um, for an aging population here. Yeah, there's, a, there's a direct correlation there, no doubt. <clears throat> Any other questions at this time? Supervisor Wagner. Just a quick question about the timeline. I know the bond council, for the distinguished bond council, decided that, uh, or said that it, we wanted to look for funding the bonds in September. And how does that coincide with construction season? Any money available for construction season? Should it be later in the early, early in the? Should actually have the bond issuance in January so that the money can be available for the start of construction in the spring? Would that be better? Yeah, 2015 is what we're looking for. Right. Well, your construction season. Yeah, construction but, but you, yeah, but you don't want to issue it in September of 2015. No, the earlier is better for us to work the plan. Yeah, but I, thought, I think he said September, if, if I wasn't mistaken. Is that Yes. Right. Um, I, I believe that uh, it's, it's important for us to do it in the fall in connection with the budget so that we build whatever proposed debt service is into the, the 2015 budget. There's some other legal rules as far as certifying our levy you know, in uh, November. And uh, in order to do that, I think we need to know what our debt service is going to be in 2015. We, we can always budget for it. You're talking you budget know, versus issuance, right? That, that's your question? Yeah. The, the timing of the issuance would be later. Again, uh, Jared indicated that the, that the bidding on the borrowing may be in November. Uh, I think it could be later. Yeah, I thought, I thought he said earlier. Any other questions on this order of business? Well, thank you, Highway Department. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it. Appreciate all your time. Leaves us one other order of business today, it's one. It's page 159 in your packet, and it's a resolution relating to like and public service of William Hall Mill, and I'd ask the clerk to please read that resolution. Well, this resolution will be number 14-5-3, and uh, as, as Lance said, it is relating to the life and public service of uh, former county board supervisor William Hall Mill. For a copy of this resolution before the family, I have a motion by Supervisor Nelson, and second by Supervisor Hamilton. Uh, use a voice vote on this. All in favor, please signify by aye. 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 I want to uh, oppose. I want to note that that carried unanimously. And then I would ask that the board please stand in silence for one minute in respect for this passing. I'm sorry. Um, and as I said before, um, Amy Kaup uh, would like your feedback after after the meeting regarding uh, questions, future training um, on your iPads. Um, also on the front desk here um, are copies of the proceedings from the last session of the county board. So uh, everything that happened in the last uh, uh, two-year session is contained in that book for your taking. Okay. So a couple quick things. Next meeting, June 17th. I really appreciate the time and effort that uh, the systems department and Amy has put forth in getting there. How did that work for everybody out there? Pretty good today, first run through? Good. Yeah. Fantastic. 
So president, I won't be president at the next county board. I got that board. Okay. We'll, we'll so no. Anything else that needs to come before the board for you entertain a motion to adjourn? Okay. Okay, motion to adjourn. Al Warden seconded by Hankel. Any discussion? There isn't any. All in favor signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.